Shri Darshak Mandali, welcome back to our show, uh, Politics and Beyond. We are here to talk about the fact that we are here to talk about Jim Fitzpatrick, our uh, Honorable MP for Popular and Limehouse. আমাদের এখনকার সেগমেন্টে আমরা যেটা আমরা আলাপ করব সেটা হচ্ছে যে দি এমপি অ্যান্ড টায়ার হামলেটস পলিটিক্স জিম ফিসপ্যাট্রিক হ্যাজ বিন দি এমপি সিন্স দ্য ক্রিয়েশন অফ দিস কনস্টিটুয়েন্সি অ্যান্ড উই উড লাইক টু নো মোর অ্যাবাউট হিস পলিটিক্স অ্যান্ড দি পলিটিক্স অফ টায়ার হামলেটস দ্যাট হ্যাজ বিন এভার চেঞ্জিং বিফোর উই ডু দ্যাট আম জাস্ট কানা রিমাইন্ড ইউ অফ আওয়ার কুইজ আওয়ার কুইজ ফর টুডে ইজ When was Hong Kong handed over to China? Was it July 1997, June 2000, August 2005? Please do uh, mail your uh, answer to the email address at pnb at channelireurope.tv. Thank you. The Chinese, of course, the Chinese would say handed back to China, not handed over to China. Right. <laughs> well, I, I like Charles' uh, phrase, the great, uh, the, the great Chinese takeaway. Uh, you can't beat that. Um, we're going to talk about uh, yourself and, 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 and the Tower Hamlets politics. I mean, you've seen it all in Tower Hamlets since the creation of uh, Poplin and Canning Town, later on Poplin and Limehouse. Um, it's so ever-changing, and um, especially in Battle Green Bow, we had Ona King since you've been there, then we had George Galloway, then we... <coughs> excuse me, now we have Roshan Ali. God knows what's going to happen in the near future. Some of them have become baroness. Some of them have gone to Bradford, uh, um, declaring a non-Jewish um, area. And uh, I don't know what Roshan Ali is going to do if she does lose her seat in the future, but that's something that we will look out to see. But I don't think Roshan Ali is going to lose her seat. Hopefully not. Uh, the... Um, What, I'm, what I really want to uh, tease out is that how do you see Tower Hamlet's politics? You've seen it for the last 20 years. How do you see it in the next 20 years? Will we see more of those kind of changes and expanding into popular Limehouse in the future? Well, there's one thing which I think can safely be said about Tower Hamlet's politics, and that is that it's never dull. Um, there's always something happening. Um, It's always interesting. If you, I mean, you've only got to go back just before I was elected. The first ever BNP, British National Party yeah. Council, was elected on the island in 1993. Um, that led to Labour winning the borough back in 94 after eight years of uh, Lib Dem control. And then 1997, we had, uh, as you say, Labour landslide. And then Galloway came in in 2001. 2001 or 2005. Five, yeah. Um, and then, uh, uh, as you say, now we've got uh, two Labour MPs again. Look for obviously has made life um, much more complicated. Uh, Tower Hamlets first um, controlling the council uh, as an independent entity uh, means that nobody knows what's likely to happen. Mm. Look for is going to be there. Everybody believes for the next three years, three and a half years now. Um, Which is the electorate, yeah. Whether he, uh, whether he is successful again remains to be seen. I think both Labour MPs will be returned um, next May. Uh, we'll have a fight in our hands from the Conservatives as well as from Respect or Tower Hamlets First or whatever they want to call themselves. Um, uh, I don't think the Lib Dems will be a threat to, uh, to either of us. So Do you think, I think UKIP will be a threat? UKIP, no, I, I can't say that. Uh, I think people uh, played with UKIP at the mayoral election and at European elections because it was yeah. a bit of a protest. I think at the general election, people will realise that here um, it's going to be a serious contest between the major parties and the independents, and I don't think the UKIP will get any traction at all. But um, some, some would say that uh, because of UKIP, uh, uh, a party like Timeless First has come through because they have taken significant amount of votes. Like uh, McQueen took about five and a half thousand vote, which could have swung either the t with the Tories or or with with Labour, or certainly some of it had uh, been divided, maybe 40, 20, or whatever. Uh, and um, in locally, they have also took uh, like for the Isle of Dogs, they have took significant amount of votes. I mean, in each constituency, each each ward, they have taken about 550 to 600 yeah. votes, yeah. which could have been split between Labour and 
and I don't see that going to Tahamra's first. No. It would have been split between the Conservatives and, and the Labour. So do, I think uh, they have a role to play that, you know, um, they certainly wouldn't win, yeah. but they have a role to play that who, who is going to win. Well, I think, I, I think that's my point, is that they can't win here. Um, but they will have a wee impact, and they certainly did in the council elections. Yeah. I think it'll be even less at the general election. Right. Um, but, in, but nationally, um, their uh, share of the vote could determine whether Labour or Conservative wins the general election sure. um, by preventing Conservatives from winning or preventing Labour MPs from winning. Um, that could very well determine who sure. wins the general election. Do you agree with me that uh, when, when voters are in a disarray, uh, they really don't know where to go. They're frustrated with the big parties. That's when the small parties come along, like in 2005, uh, George Galloway, then in Barking Dagenham, the BNPs, um, then this time around in Tower Hamlets. And nationally, as you can see, that nobody is a winner. It's a coalition at the moment. So eventually, the voters come around, come, come back home, uh, if you may, and vote their way. But when they're in a disarray, they kind of vote, okay, I'm not, it's like a protest vote, and then it ends up giving it in the hands of people like Lutfurama and George Galloway. But that's, or, the, or that's the essence of politics. That's the, that's the job of politicians, is to get the message across, to persuade people that we do have answers, that we do have ideas, that we can address their big issues. The biggest frustration for me at the council elections uh, earlier this year was that the turnout was only 47%. Now, we know how big an election this was because we were active in, in politics and in media and yeah. journalism, um, and yet only 47% of people in Tower Hamlets turned out. Pretty, the yeah. last general election in my constituency, the turnout was closer to 65% which is much more respectable above the national average, sure. but that's because it was a big contest between yeah. myself, the Conservatives, and George Galloway. Sure. Um, so you need to create that level of interest and excitement for people to want to play a part, want to participate, sure. want to go out and vote, but that's our job. Which we're seeing in, in the Scotland referendum, apparently it's up to 80%, but we'll talk about that in our next segment. Okay. Um, do you think that religious has a part to play in, in politics? especially in, in East London at the moment. Um, the uh, rising of the Palestinian flag in Town Hall, the black flag in, in Wilcrock's uh, estate. Do you think that is part of the politics that, uh, um, how would I put it, that you know, people would sign up to, that this is how, if an if if elected member supports this or a politician supports this, I will vote this way. What do you think about that? I personally don't think religion has any place in politics. Uh, religion, to me, should be something which is entirely personal, entirely private. Um, what religion I or you or anybody else practices or believes in is a matter for them and their conscience. And therefore, it shouldn't have a role in politics. Politics is about ideas, it's about economics, it's about um, housing and all the issues that we've been talking about. Um, and in that instance, religion should be kept out of politics. And that's why the, the Palestinian flag, I can understand why Luke for raised the Palestinian flag in front of the town hall. It was a you, political, you can, you mean. It was a political yeah, okay. gesture of solidarity okay. with the plight of the Palestinian people, and I understand that. Okay. The black flag is a whole different question, because the black flag is either the flag of the Muslim army, which makes it a very political uh, uh, symbol, um, or it's the Shahadad, the flag of Islam, um, if it is a religious flag, then it should be in a religious building, not in a council estate, not in public buildings. And even Lutfer saw that, which is why he told council officers to go and take it off the Will Crooks mm. estate, but it was taken off by the residents there themselves before the council sure. officers turned up. Sure. So politics is very, very important to individual people, and everybody should have the right, which we cherish in this country, to follow their religious beliefs as a matter of conscience. And no religion should dominate another religion. No religion should prevent another religion from being followed. Um, politics is a more general uh, matter for public opinion and public debate and public Social decisions. Structures. Religion is private from my point of view. Sure. I mean, the Palestinian flag, it was not only flown on in Tower Hamlets, but uh, I think Preston was the first to, to put it up. And it, then it was Tarhamless and then another borough uh, up north, uh, I think in Scotland, uh, uh, probably Glasgow, if I could remember right, 
I might be wrong. Sure. They they put up uh, uh, that flag, but not the not the other flag sure. that, that was only in in, in Tahamris. But um, let's talk about um, your role uh, within within the constituency and uh, uh, parliament and things like that. I mean, what power as an MP do you have over the council? That let's say somebody comes comes over to you and says X, Y, and Z. And then obviously you'll have to take that on board. But what power do you directly have over a council that uh, you can make a difference of, of anybody or of anything? Well, the, the role of an MP works at, at three different levels. My job is to liaise with public bodies, like the council, like the police, like the health service, like the fire brigade. Um, and when I get complaints from my constituents about the level of service that's being provided, my job is to meet with the people responsible and to try and improve uh, the service. Um, secondly, I deal with um, my own constituents with their own personal issues. Um, I liaise with the business community, the voluntary sector, to try to make sure that uh, it's functioning as well as possible. And in Westminster, my job is to lobby government to make sure that Tower Hamlets gets its fair share of the resources um, and that we can lobby ministers to make sure that we have enough resources for our public services, for our police, for our hospitals, for our GP practices. So the role of an MP is uh, a facilitator, um, is a lobbyist, um, is an advocate and a champion, um, and somebody who makes the connections between all the different bodies. So it works at a whole number of different levels. What, uh, I mean, uh, I once heard from, from one of the one of the imams uh, on Burdett Road, uh, I forgot the name of the mosque, it's right beside Little. Uh, he once said it to me um, that because of your involvement, um, he got the planning permission. So do you think that, you know, you can influence the council? Well, when I, when I write, uh, when any MP writes to any public body, what um, has always impressed me is the power of House of Commons headed paper because whoever I write to, they know um, that if I don't get an honest answer and an accurate answer, then I can raise the issue with the people in government who control their funding, sure. who control their decision making, who control their ability to function. Um, so I always tend to get honest answers, whether it's from the council, the police, the immigration authorities, you name it. Sure. I can get answers from my constituents uh, for my constituents that they can't get themselves and that lawyers can't get for them or councillors can't get for them and that's a very important part of the role of an MP uh, to act as the champion and the representative for individual constituents. Planning, I try to stay out of planning issues because I do not have any control or any power over that sure. because these are matters for the council but when I get constituents who raise planning concerns, I make sure that they know how to register their objections, sure. who to contact, um, that those objections process, are registered, yeah. um, and I can act as a, a, a letterbox and I can passport their complaints on sure. to make sure that the system works sure. as fairly as possible and people yeah. get a fair hearing. Okay, um, how good is your relationship with the, because you're, you're not only a MP in Tower Hamlets, uh, but you live in Tower Hamlets, um, not like a lot of the MPs that live far away and then and then come into Parliament here, but you're pretty much everything's here except for just going to the to the or to the Westminster. How how is your relationship with the current administration in in the council? Uh, because the way the, the reason I'm coming I'm asking you this is that I'm coming from a point where uh, there they were uh, your mates at one point in political terms. You know, they were in your Labour Party. Now they're your opposition. So, what is the mechanism? How do you get things done, um, or raise issues? Well, as opposed to having um, friend to friend cups of tea, everything's done professionally and yeah. formally. Uh, so it's formal correspondence or formal emails or formal uh, phone conversations between my office and the appropriate director at the town hall. Sure. Um, obviously, I've got my Labour councillor colleagues yeah. um, and I can brief them and prime them with, uh, with issues uh, that are being brought to my attention so they can raise it as well. Um, so it's very businesslike. How, how would you, uh, what would you think, uh, uh, you know, the current council, Tahamless Council, how are they performing? from your point of view, well, as an MP sitting well, above? We had concerns as we articulated and published um, at the election that we felt a number of the decisions 
that were being made by Lutfa uh, were wrong. Um, but then that's a, that's the whole essence of politics. Yeah. We didn't you, think you, you kind of have to split it between the political side and the administration. Yeah, side. we didn't. Um, we didn't think the political priorities were the right priorities. We didn't think that the decisions he was making and spending were uh, were correct. We didn't think that he was delivering as well as he ought to be delivering. Uh, we had a whole program which um, look for has adopted some of our programs. So okay. that's a kind of a compliment, and we'll be monitoring to see how well mm -hmm. he delivers in but, terms of uh, what he's going to do for the people of Tower Hamlets. But would we you don't think he did very well in his first time and sure. the indication so far is that nothing's going to change very but would quickly. Would you not agree that he's, he's done four and a half thousand properties, uh, well Labour would say different but he says four and a half thousand properties and he's committed to do another five thousand properties this term and then the streets are all clean, the lights are still littered, you know, so in terms of delivering service he's still doing the, the, uh, as best as he can. Would you not agree that the borough is running perfectly fine? Well, I think the, uh, the services that have been provided by uh, the staff of Tower Hamlets Council, they'll always do the best they can. Wh whoever's in power, whether it's the Lib Dems, whether it's Labour, whether it's Conservative, or whether it's Look for Ramen, sure. the staff will do the best for the residents of Tower Hamlets. Um, and that's our best protection. The political priorities that Look for has chosen, and some of the ones he's likely to, to choose, we will disagree with. Um, had he built the four and a half, of them were started before he even came to power, then uh, we might have an, a, a kinder word to say about him. He's promising 5,000. We'll see what happens in the next four years. And I know that all the political parties will be watching look sure. for to see what the delivery is before we, we're going to go on a break before we go i just quickly wanted to want to ask you know this question that what was your role in getting the housing funding because labor labor your party um <coughs> say that it's you and Roshan ali that has got the money in the conservatives are saying that it was george osborne who's pay, you know done the check and uh, uh, Lutfer is saying that it was him who negotiated and got the money in. Whichever way, Tahamlis Borough has got one of the highest uh, funding ever, 130 million or so. What role did you play in it? Well, as I said um, earlier, my job is to lobby government to make sure... On this specific housing uh, funding? Uh, my job is to lobby government. Have my the lobby correspondence that I do with ministers to make sure that we get our share of the income that, town, uh, that taxpayers and Tarhamets pay towards the National Exchequer. Though that pressure is ongoing all the time to make sure that we get our fair share. Um, that's carried out by me, by Rishanara, by our front bench. We monitor the government's figures every year. Um, Luke Firm will no doubt claim some credit. George Osborne will claim some credit. Um, I think, as in, as in politics and many things, um, all the success stories has many, have many parents. Yeah. All the failures are orphans. Quickly on a last thought, Lutfi Rahman and his administration is trying to CPO, uh, compulsory purchase uh, of two of the Docklands, Isle of Dock sites, big large sites, which has been sold to developers earlier by private equity, and they are gone bust. Uh, each of them is in the region of 37 million pound. Now, Luther claims that there's no money, in, uh, uh, not enough money, the government's cutting his money. Where do you think that he's going to get this money if he does a, a CPO on this? Uh, and why is he buying from, from a private uh, I mean, company? I've got no idea where he thinks he's going to get the money from, but it sounds like an awful lot to me. Okay. Well, thank you, Jim. Uh, we're going to come back and talk about Scotland in a bit. Shri Darsha Pandali, I'm going to talk about the first time. এবং ব্যক্তিগত এসে আবার আপনাদের সাথে কথা বলবো আমাদের সাথে আছেন জিম এবং উইল টক अबाउट স্কটল্যান্ড